All right, good morning, guys. It's uh, Tuesday morning. We're at the Hack and Pack shop. This is the truck we've been waiting for. 2001 Silverado. 4x4, four four, four door. Oh, yeah. And it is rough. Wheel wells don't look too bad, right? Well, somebody has already hacked and packed this one. So we have ourselves a nice little hammer here. And let's see how bad she's hacked and packed. Oh, yeah. Bondo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now that's rust. Yeah. See, Bondo can make things look pretty, but that don't always mean that they're pretty. So we got a little something here, here too. Oh yeah. Yeah. And this is just an ordinary poker hammer. This is uh, nothing special. There's no secret, you know, torch behind it. Just you know, doing whatever. Let's see what this side brings, the uh, right side. Oh, yeah. 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 Would have never thought, would you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's rust. Some nice rocker panel action going on here. Oh, yeah. This is a 10 year old truck, guys. 10 years old. I love my Chevys, but I don't love that. Let's see what we got on the rocker on this side. We got a lot of damage on this one. Creasing the fender there, the bottom of it's buckled there. Freaking door's got a dinker in it. Holy shit. So the first four and a half minutes of this video is just destruction. Now is what we got. We have some patch panels. 
They're 50, I don't know, $59 a piece, something like that. Left and right side, I don't know which is which here. Upper right hand. Because what these panels are, they're what they call a slip-on panel. Pretty much, but this panel don't even cover the whole rotted area. Kind of just goes right over the top, just like that. But it looks like we're going to have to do a little uh, fabricating down there. Because the panel don't even cover that. <clears throat> Unfortunately, he's going to lose his 4x4 emblems on this one. I don't think I'll be able to save him. So, yeah. That's what we got. Now, see what a $60 panel does? Makes a huge difference. So, it's that. Or you try to hack and pack that. Spend the money, get the panels. You'll save a lot of time. A lot of aggravation, and you'll actually save money. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess I'll get the cutoff wheel out. I don't have my rockers yet. I haven't even ordered them yet. Rockers are just depressing. I don't mind these wheel wells, but... Doing those rockers, it just sucks. Laying on the ground, freaking sweating and dirt and shit. And... Alright, I'll stop bitching now. So, yeah. 2001 Chevy Silverado. We're going to do a little how-to vid on this one. Actually, lots of how-to vids. This will be probably a video series running most of the week. So, you guys can see this truck go from a $2,500 truck to a... $6,000 truck. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. Alright, so the first step is what you guys want to do is actually cut out this rod. I've already started cutting this all out with a cutoff wheel. I'm not cutting out the whole area of the panel. You know, it's going to overlap quite a bit, but you at least want to get a majority of this rot cut out of here. Otherwise, the rot's just going to keep going up and up and up and up. You don't want that. So let's finish cutting out this area here. Something like that. Now this behind here, I mean, this should have another panel put on it. But unfortunately, we don't have another panel for it. So what I'll do, I'll just take the cutoff wheel and just kind of cut a lot of this crap off of here. And then we'll just leave it open on the back side, which might not be a bad thing anyway. Granted, the crap will blow up in there, but it'll also be easier to rinse it all out, too. You know, these are all sealed up from the factory, pretty much. And the crap does lay in here, but the more open that you have after you do these repairs, sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. Because it's kind of hard to describe it, but... The problem is, is this is sealed up so well in this wheel well, all that salt and crap just lays down in there and rots it from the inside out. So we'll take the cutoff wheel and just cut some of this crap off of here. <laughs>
All right, we just got most of it cut out of there. That'll be good enough for this job. This is not a big paying job. This is an economy job, but a do it semi right job also. So got most of the bad crap cut out. Then just take, go ahead and grab your new panel. Now this panel is only made to meet this line here. So unfortunately it doesn't go down below that line, so we're going to have all this area here with no panel over it. So that means we're going to be fabricating shit. Oh yeah. Pretty much, that's where this new panel is going to sit. Now it's probably what I'll do is I'll take and trim a lot of it down, like right above that lip there. I'll probably grind a lot of that out of there, or uh, cut a lot of it out, so we're not putting Bondo everywhere we don't need to, or body filler I should say. But back here it does have a hole in this area, so we're going to have to cut it kind of funny. Oh yeah. Rust. Okay, so I did is I held the uh, repair panel up there and then I outlined it in tape where the actual panel comes up to. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to trim the panel probably down here and then go across, maybe either straight across or I'll go up a little bit for this hole and then back down. I want to keep the, the repair area as small as possible because I don't want body filler you know, way, way up here in the box or, you know, anywhere, you know, as little body filler as possible. You know, I don't want to put a gallon of body filler in the box sides of this thing, you know what I mean? Um, so that's what we're going to have to do here because the body, the panel only comes, like I said, to this edge here, this body line. So we're actually going to have to try to make a little patch for this area and then maybe another little something to tie in this existing piece into the actual uh, new wheel arch. We're going to have to do it on both sides. So we're going to definitely have to do that because otherwise, you know, see how flexible this is? I don't know if it's picking it up or not. But this is, you know, once you cut all that out, there's, you know, it's kind of floppy. I don't want that. <clears throat> so, so what I'm going to do is just figure out where I want to cut this new panel. You know, I'll run a piece of tape or whatever. And uh, we'll trim we'll trim the new panel, and then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll put some tack welds on it to hold it in place, and then we'll make ourselves a little uh, a little panel for here, which kind of sucks. I really wasn't intending on getting into all this, but we're there now. There's no turning back. So I'm going to take and grind this area all out with a grinder because there is you know there is some body filler in here still, not a lot. You know it was not all that thick. Um, like here's a piece of it here that came out. I mean, it's maybe an inch, an eighth of an inch thick, if that. I mean, it's not that. I, I'd say about an eighth inch. So, but see, these things just rust from the inside out. This is the inside of this, what we just cut out of here. That's why it's very important, you know, when you guys buy a new vehicle. Get the son of a bitch undercoated before you even drive it. You know, get it undercoated, and when you go to the car wash, get that wand up, you know, and try to blow it all in the, the back sides of the nooks and crannies of everything, or you're going to have this. I mean, this is a 10-year-old truck. You know, I'm guessing this truck had to have been, you know, damn near 30000 new. It's Silverado fully loaded. It doesn't have leather, but, I mean, other than that, it's it's loaded. So you spend $30,000 10 years ago, and this is what you have. You have a $2,500 truck if you don't take care of it. You know, this can be prevented. Frequent car washes, you know, and undercoating when the thing is new. If you don't want to undercoat it, buy a little sprayer and spray used motor oil or something all up inside all them, uh, all those areas. You know, that's, what a, that's poor man's undercoating. Just spray the underside of the car with some used motor oil, and they say drive it down a dusty road. And the dust will stick to the oil, but the oil will be stuck to the sheet metal underneath and the frame and whatnot. And that's what they say. Old old school shit right there. 
I mean, this all could have been prevented. You know, it's it's just too bad. You know, it's a nice truck, really. Inside of the box is real decent on it. They had a tonneau cover on it. I mean, you could tell they really didn't, you know, use it as a work truck. It was just kind of neglected when it came to uh, taking care of it. So, yeah, we're going to start trimming up some shit. All right, so I took the, the uh, panel and I cut it down to what I needed. Now, if you look here, you can see what I showed you earlier. And then what I did is I scribed into the metal here. And this is actually what the panel is now. I'll, I'll set it up here. There you go. So all that area there, we're not going to have to, you know, we're not going to have to go all the way up to the top of this box site for body filler now. It's going to save a lot of work. So what I'll do now is grind the affected area, and uh, we'll go ahead and put some tack welds in this panel. And then we'll uh, start making something for this area. Oh, yeah. All right, so I ground down the affected areas. I just run one zip screw in it just to kind of hold it in place, and then I can pivot it or do what I need to do. Um, so that's what we'll do. We'll just start running some tack welds. We'll start actually where the pivot screw is in the middle. Then we'll just go out a couple this way and then out a couple this way and work it all the way around. If you just go ahead and tack it here and then here, 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 and here, something like that, which you could do it too, but then the problem is, is if the metal starts to warp or whatever, then a lot of times you're, you're just going to have a, you know, like a gap. So I usually start from the middle and work my way out on the patches. It just, that's my preference. I'm not saying it's the right way or the wrong way. It's just how I prefer to do it. So we'll go ahead and uh, start putting a couple tack welds. And another nice thing is too, is uh, when you do that, you can actually get a ground. The sheet metal screw will act as a ground to your new panel and your old panel. So that kind of makes things a little bit easier. But we're going to have some work to do here. And definitely here. Oh yeah. Rust sucks. If you guys ever want to get into this business, it sucks. But it's money. It's something to do, I guess. Okay, got it all tack welded in place. I just put a little little tack about every, eh, they're about an inch or so apart from each other. Some are a little closer, some are a little further. Um, the way to really do this right would be to actually fill all this whole area in with weld in between all of your tack welds. We're not going to do it with this one because it's not, it's just not paying. Um, I mean, this repair will hold up just fine. Um, the other, the other one uh, versus this and going the other way, you're looking at, you know, a difference of just a year or two anyway, probably. So, um, you know, for, for longevity. But once you go ahead and, and fill all this with uh, um, your fiber filler or your Duraglass, uh, I mean, it, it's going to be almost a bulletproof repair anyway. And then is what you do up on the back side here. I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not. Um, but where the seam is in here, which it would be right up in here where my thumb is, if you can see it. Um, go in there with just some old roofing tar or undercoating or anything and just pack all that right in nice. And then you won't have to worry about water getting in between the two layers of steel. Um, that's pretty much the, the reason why you... Um, weld all this together is so the, the water doesn't get in between the two layers But if you go up in there with some tar or something, you know roofing tar works great I know it's redneck, but you know what it works great, and it's a lot cheaper than freaking undercoating And you can really get up in there and slap it in nice, you know, and it stays nice and gooey, which is a good thing, too So now is what we'll do we'll figure out what we're gonna do with these little areas here um, I'll probably just make a little patch for this and uh probably make a little piece of metal to join these two pieces of metal here and then we're going to do the same thing on this side so we'll see what we can whip up real quick and start getting this thing ready for some body filler i don't have the rockers yet so we probably won't be doing a rocker video for the next day or two i'm just concentrating on these wheel wells today i have the stuff here for them and figure you know at least get get going on these for now so oh yeah all right, so I got my patch uh, in place and all welded. Sorry I didn't get a video of, of that part for you guys. I'm kind of in a hurry here. It looks like it's going to be uh, raining pretty soon. So we just got the first coat of uh, Duraglass on it. 
So we're just kind of letting this dry now. Good solid metal here now. So yeah, that's what we're doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just hit all this Duraglass real lightly with a grinder, give it some sort of a form, and uh, then we'll go ahead and, and start laying the uh, Evercode uh, body filler on it. Oh yeah. All right, so I've been working on the Silverado. Got the uh, um, Duraglass over the one wheel well there. I started welding the other wheel on it while in the and uh, ran out of wire. So the kids were playing with some Play-Doh. So I decided to make Brandon a little Play-Doh dinosaur. Tyrannosaurus, my best. Yeah, Tyrannosaurus. You can already know who Yeah, it is. so I made me a Play-Doh dinosaur. This pays big bucks. So if you guys would like a Play-Doh dinosaur, just uh, email $99.95 to uh, pisser20001 at yahoo.com and we will hook you right up. Oh, yeah. $99.95. Anybody going to bid on this thing? My favorites are dinosaurs. You should see my room. Paige, so, how much you want to pay for this dinosaur? Too much. You want to pay too much? Yeah. How much you want to pay, honey? Two cents. Two cents. Kiss. Never mind. Ninety-nine ninety-five, folks. For Tyrannosaurus. You should Nobody really see it? my room. It's filled with a bunch of dinosaurs. Yeah, Brandon's got like a dinosaur freaking museum going on. So anyway, this is what we got. You want to ride the four-wheeler? Okay, we will in a minute. Started freaking raining a little bit. Got all of our Duraglass uh, ground down. Now I'm just going to take uh, the DA with some 80 grit and feather all this out. Probably about this far out into the 4x4 sticker. And uh, then we can go ahead and put the Evercoat final body filler on it, the lightweight filler. And yeah, this is how far I got with this panel. Started freaking tacking around and burnt through right there. Boom, 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 and then freaking ran out of wire. So, yeah, I think we just might call it a day today. It's like 2 o'clock. And uh, by the time we go get the welding wire and come back, it'll probably be pouring. So, yeah, that's where we're at. So I guess we'll see if we can get the old uh, Lakota fired up here. And uh, I'll take the kids for a quick spin around the yard. <laughs> so you guys have a goody-goody. Hope you learned a little bit of something. Don't Hope you're enjoying the vids. What's that, Brandon? Don't forget that. Don't forget dinosaurs. Like I said, guys, $99.95. Made by yours truly, Mr. Pisser. Oh, yeah. Play-Doh dinosaur. No guarantee My room is it'll dinosaur be in land. the same condition when it gets mailed to you, though. Oh, yeah. My room is dinosaur land. Dinosaur land. Later, guys.